Hi there, and thank you for joining our Katia User Talk, a new program where we invite on one hand a Katia user, a super Katia user, and on the other hand, uh, an expert from Dassault System. So today I'm very happy to welcome Etienne Baer, who is the co-founder of Hiveate, a startup which um, designs, assembles, and certifies liquid hydrogen storage systems. Hi, Etienne. Good morning, Anne. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. And we also have on stage Daniel Pizak, um, who is managing a team of process experts uh, in mechanical industry for Katia at Dassault System. Hi, Daniel. Hello, Anne. How are you doing? Hello, Etienne. So, Good morning. Uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be with you, uh, guys and ladies uh, in the audience. Uh, you know, I was mainly um, driving a lot of um, Katia Dual Talk. It's not over. I will continue, by the way. But now, um, thanks to Anne, we are introducing a new type of talk. We are talking directly with uh, end users, such as Etienne. It's, I'm very honored to be with him. And uh, the idea is to, to, to get the feeling uh, of uh, our end users uh, regarding, of course, uh, Katia. So um, if we start, um, Etienne, can you just describe what is IV8, uh, what, it, what, what is the purpose of the company, and what is your uh, role within this company? Sure. Mike is yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so yes, IV8, as uh, Anne briefly described, uh, designs, integrates, and aims to certify liquid hydrogen storage systems mainly for heavy-duty applications. And we are actually at the moment focusing on large airplanes as defined by the CS25. Uh, the company is still a, a pre-seed startup. We are headquartered in Germany, in the Munich area, where we are also incubated. We receive support from the European Space Agency, from the Bayern uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs, and to some extent, uh, TUM, uh, which is Munich's uh, technological university. Um, so we are in the um, preliminary design stage at the moment. Uh, and uh, as for myself, I've been brought to the founding team. So I'm a co-founder of the company uh, for my background and experience as a fuel system and engine installation engineer in the aerospace industry. So I come from uh, 10 to 12 years of experience in large organizations um, in France, but also in, in Europe. I worked in the UK, in Germany. Uh, and I decided to to put that career on on pause, on hold, uh, follow a little bit more my my gut feeling, and and jumped into the the startup world. Okay, so go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, sorry for that. No, no, that's okay. Uh, so as co-founder, I uh, and and previously fuel system engineer, I mostly oversee the the R and D activities at Hive8, uh, which includes uh, in other uh, aspects. Uh, design and simulations that I perform essentially in the 3D experience environment. Okay, so to be uh, to be honest, I'm very impressed. Huh? You have a very very ambitious project. Um, so uh, and 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 what are and to face those challenges of designing those advanced technology um, for those uh, very very challenging uh, targets. Um, you are using 3D experience Katia on the cloud. Um, can you yes. tell us? Um, how 3D experience Katia, or 3D experience, by the way, help you to do the job? Um, and can you emphasize what you, you really think are the main benefits of this uh, solution to help you achieve um, successfully your targets? Yes. So <clears throat> um, I started using Katia uh, roughly 12 years ago. Uh, quite extensively in the frame of a scholarship at the Georgia Institute of Technology. So I was still a student and was paying for school basically uh, thanks to Katia already, putting together some tutorials and delivering training in uh, mostly knowledge-based design. And I realized uh, that the power of the tool was actually uh, not only in, in design, but, but actually implementing some classroom content, uh, in this case, aerospace systems engineering, directly into the, the design. So blending the two, uh, computer edit design and the theory of systems engineering. So fast forward to today, uh, when we decided to, to start Hiveate from the ground up, uh, I also saw this as an opportunity to integrate 3D experience and all the applications available 
uh, in basically every uh, engineering process of the company so that we could have this systems engineering approach from start supported by the CATIA tools. So in addition to, yeah, um, yeah, to, to go more into details, perhaps uh, in addition to the basic um, KTA workbenches or KTA applications, I believe, as they are called today, uh, such as uh, part design, assembly, generative shape design, and so on, uh, we are um, mostly using the, all the optimization tools, uh, the functional uh, generative design application uh, as, a, as the central piece where we prepare all the models uh, and the finite element uh, assemblies uh, so that we can then perform optimization, sensitivity analysis, uh, and so on, and to quickly iterate on the preliminary design that I was talking about earlier. Uh, and this is uh, made even more powerful that uh, within a startup, uh, we have this, uh, this low head count in the end, it's a, it's a very small company. So everyone can do a little bit of everything. And, and these tools, they really put together all the, the functionalities that we need. Um, so perhaps we can uh, quickly see the, the outcome of, uh, of such uh, um, a workflow um, that I quickly described. Yeah, please, um, please, please share, please share it. <laughs> So, so at the end, everything is managed in the parametric design study tool. Uh, unfortunately, I had to blur some of the critical areas of, of the interface, uh, but that's typically the type of interface that uh, I wanted to have 12 years ago, which was not already available with Sketia mm -hmm. V5, mm -hmm. but that is now available in, uh, in 3D experience, where you can really conduct from a, a parametric design as a, as a baseline, some detailed sensitivity analysis um, and optimization studies uh, to quickly get to the either the optimal design or to understand at least um, how your variable uh, parameters will will drive your design. So, so what we do using knowledge-based um, design and, and knowledge-based features in KTIA, in addition to the to the basic uh, workbenches is we make the, the entire design parametric. So you have to keep it simple so that it's really um, able to, to evolve without any errors or, or whatsoever. Uh, we also derive some key performance indicator from geometrical features um, and so on that then drive the, the sensitivity analysis. And, and we can really use the, the design itself, the 3D model as, as the starting point but we extract so much more value out of KTIA uh, with the parametric design study. And one tool that I find uh, especially useful in, in this uh, workbench, the parametric design study, is the design uh, space verification stage, I believe, if I got it right, yep. in which you can basically test a bunch of design configurations. So you have a parametric model with so many design variables, can be quite a lot, but again, I, I recommend to use only uh, a few for, for stable uh, results. Um, and you can test a, a bunch of these on 50, 100 different design points to make sure that in the first place, KTIA can actually compute your model, which is not always a given. Uh, we tend to go into very complex uh, definitions with many different parameters and, and that can crash or, or you believe you get a, a healthy result. But in fact, when you push the boundaries, when you really explore your design space, you, you find out that, oops, uh, it doesn't work. In some cases, it, it doesn't even compute. And so even if you don't go as far as sensitivity analysis or, or even optimization studies, using this tool can really help you um, putting together a sound design that you can then, for example, use during reviews uh, and to propose different alternatives to whoever you're talking to, could be a customer, could be an internal customer, like a project manager, uh, doesn't matter. So, so this really allows um, Hiveate moving forward uh, much more quickly, debugging the models, uh, saving time in the end and money, of course. Um, and at the moment, we are in the process of building our first prototype, which is very exciting. Uh, and that was really enabled by, by this uh, environment provided by 3D Experience.
Oh, it's very, very impressive. Uh, I am also a fan of parametric design study. It's really a very, a very, very great help when you are designing and you have multiple, you know, variant alternatives you would like to, to optimize and, and uh, quickly find out the best solution or to convert to, to, towards the best solution. A any, uh, a quick question before you, besides, besides, uh, besides that, what is, um, uh, for you, the ideal profile of a user Uh, to be able to use this technology, you know, we can read the, in, in the internet, in the literature, some topic about a T-shaper profile. So a guy like you, who has probably a mechanical background, plus one branch of the T for FEA and maybe another branch of the T for system engineering. Do you think this is the ideal profile of um, for the skills of users behind the driver, uh, on the driver's seat? Yeah, I, I reckon it is, and in fact, it's it's uh, at least from a, a French and American perspective where I studied myself, mm -hmm. it's kind of the default um, profile that you get out of school. Yes. Uh, so, <laughs> generally speaking, you you tend to study general topics. Even mechanical mm -hmm. engineering is is quite a broad yeah, discipline yeah. Um, mm -hmm. compared to how. Uh, mostly large organizations are organized today where people tend to be more specialized. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think those tools that, that are now available in, in 3D experience, they really um, allow, enable those profiles coming out of school to fully express their potential. Uh, I got frustrated myself, to be honest, when I started working uh, as a stress engineer, that was my mm -hmm. first job, mm -hmm. uh, that I couldn't touch design at all. Like even if mm -hmm. I spotted a flow by um, stress analysis and I, I knew I could quickly fix it because it was like a tiny part and, and an easy fix to, to provide, I would get told off by the designers because it was their job and, and I understood it's it's only right, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but when you're in a, in a startup organization where people can... Um, do pretty much everything and and the whole workflow is is more fluid those tools really uh, allow you to uh, to move more quickly and and blend all the disciplines together so so i think um from start most people in the engineering world they have the right profile actually to to use them then it, it's it's all about the the rest of the organization and mm -hmm. how the internal processes are set up mm -hmm. okay Thanks a lot. Uh, uh, by the way, um, something which is, I think, important in 3D Experience Katia and 3D Experience in general versus, you know, what we had in the past called Katia V5 uh, is that now um, the engineer have access to a very, very great um, portfolio of um, physics analysis. So it's not only structural analysis, it's also fluidic, thermal, electromagnetism, um, all those very advanced simulation capabilities are, are, are just here. Uh, and completely integrated with uh, with the uh, modeling of Katia. It's why we call it that's a system modsim, unifying modeling and simulation. Um, but besides that, what is now uh, next? What are you looking for the future uh, with the platform or without? But what what are you looking for now? <clears throat> yes. So um, if we are going back, perhaps to to the slides very quickly, um, I, I can uh, say a, a few more words about this study. Um, so this is a parametric design study based on structural response of the liquid hydrogen storage system. Uh, so you can see on the left hand side the, the design space in the end or the, the response of the design space rather. Uh, we, we are trying to look for the lightest uh, outcome uh, being involved in the aerospace industry. Weight is of course uh, one of the primary design drivers. Uh, but we also uh, want maximum capacity for liquid hydrogen. Uh, and the two constraints are not necessarily compatible. So that's why we, we have to resort to, to parametric analysis and, and sensitivity analysis. Then in the middle, uh, so I had to blur the design again, sorry about that. Um, but you can see that we are monitoring the maximum displacement. So that's, uh, that's our uh, structural response parameter mainly. Uh, and again, on the right hand side, I had to uh, blur some of, uh, some of the parameters. Uh, but they are mostly geometrical at the moment, plus some KPIs that were derived from geometrical parameters, such as what we call the gravimetric index, which is basically the ratio of the payload weight over the system weight, uh, which is very important for us. But to answer your question now, um, we quickly want to integrate and move on uh, with thermal analysis. Uh, we are talking about liquid hydrogen, so that's cryogenic hydrogen in our case, so minus 254 degrees Celsius. So thermal uh, response of the system will obviously, or thermal behavior will obviously be of, of prime importance also. 
Um, this will be subject to another type of study, uh, as, as unfortunately the, the parametric design study at the moment was calibrated for, for structural uh, response only. Um, but we, we intend at some point to, to blend everything together and come up with a more uh, detailed process, let's say, or complex also process mm -hmm. uh, to, to have all the studies performed uh, in a single workflow, integrated workflow, um, and come up with the best design solution that we can find. Uh, and if we go even further uh, into the, the development plan, I mentioned that we were in the process of building our first prototype. It is small scale, mm -hmm. but next year uh, we will first test it and then move on to our first full scale prototype. And this will be the uh, opportunity and, and also a requirement to start looking into um, manufacturing in more details. And then we plan to uh, go outside of Ketia, so it's outside of this talk, um, mm -hmm. but uh, using uh, first Inovia for configuration management, because we have mm -hmm. to keep an eye on that, and then Delmia for everything related to manufacturing. Uh, for the first prototype, we decided to go with uh, 3D printing, which is relatively uh, quick and, and easy. Yeah. Uh, but then we'll have to <laughs> but then we'll have to switch uh, most likely to uh, a more traditional mechanical assembly. Uh, so with a greater part count uh, and and all the, the needs that, that come with it, uh, more detailed stress analysis also, um, and, and different manufacturing techniques uh, with a specific workflow that will be addressed in Delmia. So still and plenty I, to do, yeah, good. <laughs> but we, we are really happy to, to be able to use the, the 3D experience, uh, not just making a public advertisement here, uh, but again, as, as a new company starting from the ground up, it's really powerful to be able to integrate those tools uh, at the beginning and to have them uh, a part of the process. I've seen the opposite situation many times where you, you would like to upgrade your tools, whatever they might be. Um, and it's just made so much more complicated because you have to replace the tools in place. You have to train the people. All that comes at a cost. Uh, and even your process might have to change. So, um, so yeah, we we are really in a in a good position right now. Still a lot to do, a lot of work to be done. Um, but but happy. Hey, last question for you. Um, what about um, sustainability? Because maybe people are not aware that in in 3D experience, Katia has a sustainability app, uh, which helps the designer to get uh, the environmental footprint of his design. You know the the volume of the product, so how much material is consumed, but also the, the, the complete life cycle of the product from the design, from the engineering up to the recycling, and of course, including the manufacturing. Uh, is it something which is important for you, uh, Etienne? Uh, yes, uh, of course. So that will come also together with the next prototype. Actually, the, the first one is too small. The footprint is really small. Uh, no, no, just kidding. But yeah, we will have to look into that for uh, next year, for the next prototype and the whole manufacturing process also. Um, because uh, not only it is uh, important to potential investors, so it's one of their uh, KPIs and they, they've already been monitoring uh, carbon footprints, uh, even at startup level. Uh, so we have to pay attention to that. But it's also part uh, fundamentally of our business model, actually. So, so it's not just uh, a pretty KPI to, to look green. Uh, it, it's going to be actually uh, a central piece of, of what we do at Hive8. Um, so yes, it is planned to, to use this app. Uh, unfortunately, I cannot tell you much more about it today because I haven't started yet, to be yeah. honest. But next year, for sure, um, I, I, can, uh, I can tell more about it. Uh, th thank you very much, Etienne. Um, Anne, do you know if we have some questions in the audience? Uh, yes, and thank you for this uh, opportunity uh, regarding sustainability. Uh, for me to to uh, to tell you that um, yes, I think it's Paul from uh, Flux Art uh, who mentioned uh, zero emission uh, aviation. Uh, so yes, I don't know if you want to develop uh, uh, a bit more or not, uh, Etienne. On, on yes, that, I can uh, do that. Objective. I will not. I will not disclose any uh, IP, but it's true. We have been in uh, in discussion with a few aircraft manufacturers, uh, not Airbus, so not for the zero <laughs> aircraft, um, but for smaller regional aircraft. And one application of the system we are developing is to either retrofit existing aircraft um, or 
uh, or to fit new ones uh, with a liquid hydrogen tank uh, for most likely fuel cells. All right. Um, yes, there, there were some uh, other comments uh, regarding uh, recruitment. So I think you already <laughs> answered with the, this uh, T shape uh, uh, profile uh, previously. Uh, um, uh, yes, I think that's it. But um, yes, le let me maybe uh, tell everyone that uh, the conversation uh, could continue on the Katia user community. So if you seem some, if uh, other questions come to your mind for Etienne or Daniel, don't hesitate to go to, to this community. It's very easy. Uh, you see the link. Uh, go.freedays.com slash Katia at the bottom of our screen. And um, when you follow this link, if you haven't a DS passport yet, it's very easy to fill in some fields and to get one. And once you are in, once you access the Katia user community, uh, just give me two seconds uh, to present this. Uh, yes, this is somewhere where you can find a lot of content uh, from um, videos, um, articles, uh, blog posts. There is a wiki where there are uh, several uh, um, ways to, to find content. Uh, you can also search, uh, for example, if I search into the, the wiki or the community uh, regarding optimizations, there are a lot of content. Um, and uh, this is not the only way to search. You can also um, go into a wide, wider space, including uh, several communities, and you can refine with tags. Uh, for example, if you want more recent uh, content um, or a certain type of um, content, such as video, for example. So I let you discover. And um, I, I, yes, I suggest that you use the comment section of uh, this post if you like uh, to, to ask some more questions to uh, Etienne or Daniel. Um, and I think that's it uh, for me now. So, um, so, so well, thank uh, you. Thank, thank you very much, Anne. Uh, again, I, I really uh, uh, encourage you to go after this. Uh, Free of charge <laughs> uh, URL, uh, fully, uh, fully um, embedding a lot of content. Uh, I want also to thank you, you ladies and and, and guys who are attending this uh, this um, Katia user talk, and of course to finish with Etienne. Um, very, 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 very nice information. I was a sub -oof. for me. It was like a piece of uh, a sweet on the top of a, of a cake. It was very, very. Uh, Nice information. Uh, thanks a lot, Etienne. I wish you a lot of success to your uh, to your company, and Thank hope you. Uh, maybe to talk to you uh, maybe in one year from now about uh, sustainability. And uh, let me also wish to all the people a very nice uh, Christmas time and uh, New Year's Eve. Um, and again, uh, enjoy Katia, and continue to enjoy Katia. And maybe next time uh, it will be your turn, <laughs> and you will be also uh, be able to describe what you are doing with Katia. Thanks a, a lot, Etienne. Have a great day. And uh, uh, say hello to Etel. <laughs> Will do. Thanks for having me again. Happy holidays, everyone. Merry Christmas. And happy to answer any question you might have via the community. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you all. And as uh, Daniel said, don't hesitate to contact, to contact me in the KTI user community if you want to be part of the talk. <laughs> Goodbye for now. <laughs>